One thing that I should uh, address when talking about pouring that mold and pouring the concrete um, is the first steps I took to get that tabletop. And so what I ended up doing was doing a lot of research on how to pour concrete countertops, um, looking stuff up online, what to do, um, took all that in and kind of balanced like cost versus um, my standard. So I don't need a perfect countertop for my kitchen. I'm making a coffee bar for a young guy's house. So it doesn't have to be perfect, it doesn't have to be exact, um, it doesn't have to be filled with voids, it is handmade. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm not shying away from something that may cause a few voids or a few of those little air pockets. So um, the, uh, I guess, method that I chose and the method that I went with is this. So what I did was I uh, measured out exactly how big I wanted the countertop to be. I made a mold of it. And so this is melamine. It is a plywood, if you can see, plywood in the middle, plus it has this nice plastic, usually white, um, uh, outer layer, which does not stick to concrete or most other things. And so I um, made my mold, and so like I said, it's about an inch and three quarters thick. Um, it is 36 inches long and about 20 inches wide. Um, and so I made my mold, I uh, screwed it all together, and I didn't worry about gluing or anything like that because I didn't need it to be exactly tight, but I screwed it together made sure it was nice and tight. Um, and then what you do to make sure the concrete doesn't drip through the sides or anything like that is you take um, silicone. Uh, it doesn't have to be super expensive silicone, just pretty much any 100% waterproof silicone. Um, and then what you do is you put it in all these cre uh, cracks and crevices along the sides um, and the corners. And what you can do is you can actually put a bevel on it. Um, but what the silicone does is creates that barrier between the crack of the melamine and the concrete so that it doesn't drip through and seep through and cause unsightly corners or edges. And so what I chose to do was use this as a way to get that nice bevel on the top of the countertop. And so what I did was I squirted uh, the silicone, popped it right through, um, and put on more than I thought I'd need. And then what I did was I took this cheap little putty knife, I guess, uh, plastic, and then I cut a bevel in it right here. So I did 45 degree bevel, nothing too intense, and I went along the sides of the silicone, uh, scraped off the excess, and made sure that I got that nice 45 degree bevel. Um, worked out really well um, initially until I figured out that uh, it sticks to everything. Silicone, that is. It sticks to everything. So it sucks to my fingers, it sucks to the bevel, it sucks to the melamine itself. Um, and then I looked up to do a little more research and found that if you'd use some glass cleaner, could be Windex, could be whatever, um, you can also use like some hand soap and warm water and you can just run your finger along the edge. Um, but what worked for me was using glass cleaner because I could spray it along the side, the whole side, and it wouldn't stick to anything other than what the caulk had already been sticking to, um, which is the crease. And so I sprayed that along the sides, took this putty knife, and then uh, literally just went along the edge itself like this and took away the excess um, to make that nice beveled edge. I did that with the corners as well and then once that dries, it takes about 30 minutes for the silicone to dry. Um, I gave it like a couple hours because I was probably doing something else watching Netflix, who knows. Um, so I did that, let it dry and then I came back, mixed my concrete and I was ready to pour. Um, So, um, once I had this mold made, it was time to start doing some concrete. Um, and so, for me, all I've done with concrete, not a whole lot. I've done post holes, nothing like this before. I've talked to people about it, I looked online, obviously did my research, but this was kind of a new, new era for me. And so, I decided that I would go with the mortar mix because it has the ability to be poured very thin, um, all the way up to six inches. So I think it's about a half inch all the way to six inches. Um, if I'm wrong, I'm sorry, uh, but you shouldn't be listening to me anyway, you should be doing your own research. Uh, and so what I did was, I decided to get two bags of that because I'd calculated the volume of my mold, um, and it was going to be more than a 55 pound yeah, uh, bag. And it was going to be more than a 55 pound bag. Um, so I got that, uh, and a metric uh, ton of Homer's uh, Home Depot buckets, four, but um, and I wanted one of these so that I didn't have to worry about using one of those Homer buckets for uh, or five gallon buckets for water. And so I used this for water, I had those buckets, and I was ready to go. And then I realized that I did not want to hand stir um, four buckets 
worth of concrete. And so I decided to, and found this guy, which is pretty cheap um, and not that expensive. It's actually a paint mixer, not a cement mixer. So if you can find a cement mixer, that would obviously be preferred. Um, but I couldn't, so I decided to go for this guy. Um, and make sure you're not burning out your motor if you have a smaller um, uh, drill. If you if you have a smaller drill or drill bit um, or drill motor, and so make sure you're not you know uh, worrying too much about uh, how fast you're going or what's going on. But as long as you're mixing the concrete itself, it should be fine. Um, and like I said, I wanted that marbling look for concrete, so I decided to get this. It's uh, Quickcrete cement color. I got charcoal because that's kind of what I was going for, a charcoal marbling look. Um, and I added different amounts to the mix itself as I was going through. So I mixed up, I think it was a total of three five gallon buckets, not full. Don't mix full because that makes it very difficult to mix it up with either a drill or you by yourself. And so uh, I had a buddy come down and she helped me out with the mixing and pouring of the water as I was drilling, um, and that worked great. And so we added varying amounts of the color of the charcoal color to the mixes, and then we poured it into this mold and mixed it up kind of with our hands. We mixed it up, and it worked out great, I think. I love the color of it, so uh, you'll get to see that later. So that's what we did. Um, but before I uh, talk too much about pouring it actually onto the mold itself, I should say I used WD-40 and I sprayed the inside of the mold so that the mortar mix didn't necessarily stick to the sides. I was using the melamine so I wasn't too worried, but what this allowed uh, me to do afterwards was I didn't even have to disassemble the mold. I literally just inverted it and flipped it right out um, and it slid out perfectly. Everything looked great um, right at the onset. So I would highly suggest you using some kind of uh, lubricant or something like that to uh, just kind of coat the inside of your mold. Um, so other than that, uh, I can start talking about the construction of the base. Alright, so this is the base of the coffee bar. Uh, I made it out of predominantly 2x4s, pine 2x4s. I used um, some 3 quarter inch plywood here, um, as well as around here on these edges, uh, because as I was making the cuts for this baseboard uh, right here, I ended up going a little too far um, with my table saw. And so that kind of made it unsightly. I didn't like that at all. And so I decided to make this decorative little um, kind of cutout square around that um, to kind of cover up those flaws and make it look nice and flush and pretty. Um, and so I'll just go right into it. So I used um, Craig pocket holes to do most of the joinery here. Um, this is what it looks like. You can see the top. Um, and so I have three cross beams up top um, holding it in together. Um, it shouldn't have too much weight going from side to side or anything like that because it will be pushed up against a wall. So I didn't think too much cross, um, anything diagonal was necessary. Um, it's very sturdy as is, uh, very level as is, and I think it looks great. I have um, the same thing on the bottom, so three cross on the bottom. And then in the front here, you see obviously there's one long piece in the front on the, the top and bottom, and then two uh, vertical pieces uh, right there. And so there you have it. That's pretty much how I assemble this guy. Um, I will use some liquid nails to put the concrete top on top of this bad boy um, and ensure that it's level. So that's all I have left to do. I did stain it as well. I stained it with provincial um, classic woodworking stain um, and so it's just the color itself is provincial I really like this dark um, not too dark uh, where you can't see the grain but I like the dark uh, stain uh, and the dark brown look and so I stained it using that I'm going to go again and go ahead and put a polyurethane gloss I'll probably put three or four coats on there to make sure that uh, it, like the concrete countertop, is stain proof because we are messy individuals. So there's that. Um, and then we'll, we'll start talking about this guy over here. Howdy, howdy. This is Grant Lockwood. Um, this is probably the first episode I'm going to kind of film, but uh, I'll do a shop introduction to this little basement area that I've been working in for the past six months. 
Um, but for now, I'm just going to introduce you to the project I've been working on. So right now it's a coffee bar for one of my best friends. Uh, he's moving out and I want to give him a piece of furniture uh, for his new place. And um, you know maybe it'll help him remember me or something that I can do to uh, show him that I've appreciated his friendship and him putting up with my shenanigans uh, and living with me for the past you know, probably two years. Um, so, without further ado, uh, let me introduce you to this project. So, um, like I said, it's a coffee bar, but um, what I didn't say is that it also has a storage option. So, this right here is the cabinetry storage that will be hung actually above the uh, table itself. And so um, what's nice about this is that you can get little baskets, uh, which I purchased um, for a whopping $1 at Dollar Tree, to just kind of go right in there. And so you can hold whatever you like, um, whether that be coffee grounds, you know, filters, um, anything like that. You can put those up there in these cabinets and then have the bottom here, which I'll explain what the plan is for that. Um, a little bit right here. So, um, what the plan is for down there is I've constructed uh, from a previous project, I've constructed this, which is a, I think it's three quarter inch uh, galvanized steel. I spray painted it, uh, hammered black. Um, and so that's going to be a towel rack that'll hang, and it'll be right a little bit below um, those shelves. And then what else I found? I found a little chalkboard that I spray painted and then uh, sealed with some polyurethane spray uh, a little bit. Um, and so that's going to go right above. So that'll be that right there. And then what else would you need for a coffee bar but some hooks to hang your coffee mugs on. So it should be a nice little hipster addition to this household. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to have four of those. I'll give you a finished product uh, then. But let me take you over a little bit to um, the table itself. Spilling coffee on this countertop. 
something I should address is how to seal it. So, uh, for those of you who don't know, if you do have concrete um, and it is not sealed properly, then what happens is uh, when you spill water or coffee or anything that has a pigment to it, um, it'll actually seep into the concrete stone and cause a ring or a stain, just like anything else. So, uh, mind blown for me there, but uh, hopefully you guys can take that going forward. So, what I ended up using was this, which is uh, Stone Care Granite and Stone Sealer. And what it does, um, beyond just making the surface look amazing, um, is that it seals it. So it takes all those little small pores that uh, liquids would get into and it seals them uh, so that there is no stain. It'll be okay if you do, you know, have a major coffee spillage uh, on top of this table. And so, no worries there. So, spill away. Um, and so, just, just another point to add is that I actually wanted this marbling uh, texture here. And so, this is actually my doing with a, uh, um, a black or charcoal uh, color additive that I added to the cement itself. So uh, as I was mixing it up, I mixed up multiple different batches and then mixed them all together in uh, the concrete batch to get this kind of multi-toned uh, um, color you see. So that's that. Um, there's the concrete. This is the finished table. The only thing I have left to do is to uh, actually glue on the tabletop itself but I'm not going to do that until we actually get it to the house that it's going to be um, installed in. And just for ease of travel, so I don't have to damage this cover or anything like that, I can just load it separately, cover it up with a blanket or something. And I don't have to worry too much about having a top heavy uh, desk in travel or transport. But I really like how this table turned out. I think it looks great. That the shelving on the bottom turned out really, really well with the, uh, those edges that I did put in. Um, the stain and finish just brought up the grain of the wood, especially in that uh, plywood on the bottom. But also the, the structure of, this, of these two by fours, it looks, I think, very, very nice. It's got a nice glossy finish from the, the polyurethane. And I really do think that it brings out the, uh, the marbling and the concrete as well. Kind of the contrast between dark stain and a little bit lighter concrete. I did put charcoal um, dye in the concrete, but I did a, a marbling pattern as far as how I kind of colored it. And what, what that entailed was just me dumping it in, um, kind of doing three mixtures of that concrete, um, putting various amounts of dye in, and then once I did have it all in that mold, mixing it around. And I think it did turn out very, very well um, just because of the pattern you can see, it doesn't look uniform, it doesn't look like a concrete, you know, sidewalk that you walk on. It looks like a, like a nice, um, I guess a nice marble countertop. Um, it's obviously not, it's a little cheaper, a little nicer, and uh, I wouldn't feel bad about spilling coffee or, you know, digging up some of this stuff, but after all that was done, um, it turned out to be a great tabletop that I'm very, very happy and proud of. So without further ado, I'll, I'll turn your attention to the, uh, the other part of this project, which is the, um, the above storage that's going to get drilled straight into the wall. Um, and so it'll be up above. This obviously is where it's going to go, but it'll be up above, like around up here. Um, it'll have storage for whatever he needs as far as his coffee needs go. So here you have the finalized design. Um, it is... Obviously the same stain as the base of the table. Um, it won't be resting on the table itself, but it'll be up above a little bit, giving it some space for these towels to hang down off of the rack. Um, and hopefully we'll get a few bigger towels as well. But uh, just to orient you to it, we have you know, these uh, upper uh, storage shelves um, that we'll put in uh, coffee, coffee filters, uh, anything that he needs as far as what he chooses to do with this coffee bar table. Um, we'll also have uh, storage, obviously, for his cups along here with the hooks that I installed, and a nice chalkboard to write some fun comedic messages as well, um, just for him and his roommates. Um, so I'm very happy with how it turned out. The size and the, uh, the design here, as far as how each of these shelves kind of extends a little bit beyond, about an inch beyond, and the overall finish of it as well, I really, really like. Um, I think he's really going to get a lot of use out of it and enjoy the... Uh, the table itself. 